issues you know why is it that our uh, enrollment in schools it starts tapering off you know admission is a certain number they start tapering off tapering off and by the time they are reaching secondary stage in villages the number of girls become less and less why is that Ma'am, there can be many reasons, but the first and foremost reason is due to the regional disparity that the country faces. That is due to majorly socio-economic factors. The first is poverty. No, and no, no, nothing. Be specific. Uh, ma'am, let's not get general. Let us be specific to sure, girls' ma'am. education. Why do they drop out? Poverty, they can drop out, and they need not go to school at all. Ma'am, Why uh, is there so much of drop out, especially after secondary stage for girls? I mean, a very specific question, I'm asking. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, especially after a certain age, uh, girls tend to be get married and there is a perception that they need to be paid dowry. So that is the major factor why girls are dropping out of the schools. Mm-hmm. Achha. Are you in favor of ladies in combat in the armed forces? Yes, ma'am. So what are the pros and cons of that? Ma'am, uh, pros can be multifaceted, uh, but uh, there, uh, as far as cons are considered, I do not find any because today the mode of warfare has completely changed. So uh, now we have technological warfare and something like that. So I think ladies would be able to... But active combat is man to man. On the border, the picket is still there. The picket has not been replaced by a computer. Ma'am, uh, to an extent, if, if a lady is commanding the battalion, See, she'll be able to handle it. And as far as my knowledge is considered... What about infrastructure? The woman soldier? Yes, ma'am. What about infrastructure? Yes, ma'am. I think... uh, Where will she sleep? uh, If adequate training is done, she'll be able to manage. You're very fond of reading the Ramcharit Manas, huh? Wonderful. Um, Absolutely wonderful. Listening to Ramcharit Manas. Very good. So, if I were to tell you three comparisons between Ramcharit Manas and the Mahabharata. Two epics that we have. Yes, ma'am. The very first comparison uh, in similarities which I found is the avatara, which are the same. The one is Rama, which is the avatar of Vishnu. In Mahabharat, we have uh, Krishna, who is the avatar of Vishnu again. So, those are the same things. Uh, there are other avatars of other gods also. Uh, uh, that's the first part. The second part is the battle of uh, values. In first case of uh, Ramacharitmanas, that is Ramayana, uh, the battle is uh, within the family in the same uh, born of the same parents but in case of mahabharata the battle is uh, within the family also but not from the same parents that's the second uh, in third uh, similarity which i find in both the cases the battle is done because uh, there was a major challenge with the respect of women so i think that is one of the major things in uh, these two of the ancient texts what is the core philosophy of the Ramayana and the core philosophy of the Mahabharata? Ma'am, I think uh, since uh, two of the texts have been written in different times and their narrations have been in different times, so there have been differences with uh, ethics and morality. In case of Ramayana, it is based on idealism, uh, which is the values, ideas, morality. In case of uh, Mahabharata, it is more of a practical reality. That uh, if if somebody is uh, killing me or if somebody is hurting me, I should hurt him back. So this is the concept of Mahabharata. But why did Lord Ram kill Bali when he didn't even hurt him and hid behind a tree and did that's the that's the value one. Yes. Second value is he did not trust his wife who had spent fourteen years with him, the very epitome of chastity and everything and loyalty. He just to scan kakacha. And some fisherman, washerman, I don't know who he was, came and told him a story and he threw her out? Ma'am, I think... So uh, what ideal and values are those? Ma'am, in women, towards, it shows an attitude towards women. And it also shows that one, somebody else's battle, you're making your own and using very treacherous weapons. Why? That's what Bali asked, no? That I did, what did I do to harm you? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, in first case, if I am, uh, if I am to take a stand on the same, so, uh, there are ways to defend the actions of Ramas. But yes, uh, there may be perception that... No, no, you talked that about values. That's why I said. What yes, about ma'am. values? So, actually, it's the same thing. Lord Krishna was more upfront. Yes, ma'am. He says, a dharma has to be removed. Dharma has to be restored. Whatever it takes. Ma'am, in case of uh, Rama also, he did the same. Because he said that uh, what you are doing is not uh, right and according to dharma. Since you have uh, taken uh, captive of and your brothers. And what about brothers. Sita? What did she do wrong? Ma'am, uh, that so smacks of terrible, terrible bias against women, I thought. 
Ma'am, I think uh, that's a in one perception that can be in in one reading that can be done. Any reading. Uh, ma'am, maybe. Uh, woman, ma wife is not a commodity. Yes, ma'am. Obviously, wife is not a commodity. She is one of the uh, uh, co-participants. So if I were to tell you in today's a day and age, though Ram Raj is talked about, we need more of Krishna Raj than Ram Raj. Tell me, debate. Ma'am, uh, I think Ram Raj is still should be the foundational uh, value of the societies uh, because uh, the respect and care that uh, everybody gets in Ram Raj is unparalleled. In case of uh, Mahabharata, there is uh, there is a very clear cut cases of deception. There I am talking about Krishna Raj. Krishna Raj. Did not Krishna Krishna ji have values? Ma'am, he did have, but since he was a very practical person, he somehow so today he we should not be practical. Also. He somehow bent the rules also, ma'am. Ram bent the rules and it was convenient to him? Uh, Ma'am, to an extent, I have to agree with the value part. Because what he did was always with the value. And uh, What was the value in throwing out Sita and trust, distrusting her and, and humiliating her in front of everybody? What was the value in that? Ma'am, I, I think in one way that can be done since he was an administrator. At the end of the day, he has to listen to his people. No? So, Why? An administrator has to, he should have convinced his people. Why did yes, he have to listen? It was Khan Kakacha. He should have convinced his people. Yes, he could have. There is a big plot have. on the Ramayan. Is it he not? He could have. He could have. You have a hobby of listening to Ram Charit Mahas. Okay. Yes, sir. And recently we have seen that there have been some controversy about it that various comments were made up, uh, on the text. However, that do you think that uh, Ram Charit Manas has been written in a specific age and in a specific social context. The interpretation of Raman has been done in that context as well. So, can we really compare uh, what is uh, what has been mentioned in Ram Charit Manas and can we criticize it now? Do you think is it right to do so? Because it doesn't make sense, right? It has been written in a social setting, and now we are probably six hundred years ahead. So, do you think this kind of criticism just creates social division? Sir, I believe if people who are reading the texts, hmm. if, if they find certain contradictions, that must be wel welcomed because it is their interpretation. But at the same time, we have to ensure that if they are being interpreted wrongly, that must be adequately communicated to those people. Because mm -hmm. rather than bringing disharmony in the society or falling for some treacherous games, yes. we should have to ensure that society is integral and remain harmonious. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, both things can be done. At the same time, people can read it, they can interpret it differently and they can be adequately communicated. Okay. That's my take on it, sir. Okay. Thank you, Aditya. Okay. So, Aditya, tell me something that you have uh, done something on girl education, right? Yes, sir. And uh, in Bihar, this prohibition policy was uh, introduced with an objective that, you know, the incidents of domestic violence and uh, the crimes against women, uh, they should go down. And crime rate is also showing that it has gone down. <coughs> yes, but sir. now we have problems wherein people are dying of consuming spurious liquor. And again, this is affecting the uh, women in the family as well, in, in those families, right? Yes, sir. So, do you think that the initial motive of the policy, is it now going in a counterproductive manner? Because that is one of the primary goals of the policy that to empower women to make them feel safe, confident. Do you think it is now going in a counterproductive manner? Because if you look at neighboring UP, Right, UP does not have a prohibition policy, but the law and order situation has improved <coughs> a lot. Uh, women are many uh, people are expressing that it is uh, doing fine. Then, how does it actually improve things? How does the prohibition improve things? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, in my opinion, uh, a longer run for prohibition is obviously not good because mm. it's a very blanket ban mm. and it would deter to an extent, it would bring some <coughs> behavioral changes, but it must come from the uh, uh, inherent part. Mm. So I think in long run, this is not sustainable mm. because ultimately it may deter some other parts also. <coughs> but 
but at present given the situation in my state mm -hmm. i think it it should remain for for some years also mm -hmm. because uh, some incidents which which we have heard of 70 people dying from the hooch mm -hmm. they can be adequately managed <coughs> if there is a proper deterrence if there is a proper mechanism if interstate or intrastate trade can be managed mm -hmm. if pe if police can be properly sensitized to stop it and at the same time, we can involve our grassroots level people in the family also that if, if they are going to complain about the same, rather than going for jail or some trial, they can be given warnings and in this way, we can change the perception. Good. Reading the Ramayana, what is its impact on you? Uh, listening to Ramayana, whatever it is. Sir, I think uh, there have been many uh, values which have been imbibed into me after listening to Ram Charitamanas. And that is the best thing that has uh, Ram Charitmanas has done with me. It has made me very Catholic. It has made me very rational. It has made me uh, tolerant to people uh, because those are the values that I have uh, learned from Ram Charitmanas. It has also imbibed the values of perseverance. It has also imbibed the value of uh, uh, inclusivity, equality, and uh, treating everybody with the same uh, kind of jeep that you do with your family. So these are the values that I have learned from Ram Charitmanas. Mm -hmm.